Carbondale, Illinois, says it's the best. It's as good as it gets tonight. The Valley Championship is on the line. State Farm and Turin proudly presents our Missouri Valley Conference Game of the Week as the Creighton Blue Jays can wrap it up, but they take on the Southern Illinois Salukis undefeated at home here at SIU Arena in Carbondale, Illinois. Hi, everyone. I'm Mitch Holtis, and welcome to a Wednesday night in the Valley. These two teams are alone at the top. It's as simple as this as you look at the standings. If Creighton wins tonight, they will have a three-game lead with two games to go. But if Southern Illinois can win this game, Chris Piper, then it gets real interesting going into the weekend. Well, Southern Illinois, two games down to Creighton. They know this is a must-win. They have to take care of business. They also know Creighton has to go to Bradley, a place Dean Altman's never won at. Your thoughts on Creighton's Kyle Korver? Well, pure scorer for Creighton. This is a guy that can put some points on the board. He's an old-time basketball player. Offensive threat, but there's other things that he does so well for Creighton. Gets other guys involved and really is a threat to score, and so other teams have to key on him. That'll get other players involved offensively. For Southern Illinois, Kent Williams, this is a guy that's just a fantastic offensive threat. Great ball fake, the added ability to put the ball on the floor this year to complement that great outside shot. Important for him to be on the floor for Southern Illinois. He runs that team. And yet these two teams have been so very successful because they've had power in the paint. For Southern Illinois, it's Virginia Tech transfer Roland Roberts who can dominate. For Creighton, it's Northwestern transfer Brody Darren. The championship is on the line tonight in Little Egypt. I'm the We're at SIU Arena in Carbondale, Illinois, where the Salukis are 11-0 this season at home. Let's check in with Dana Altman, the head coach of the Creighton Blue Jays, last year's Valley Coach of the Year. He has had so many great years as a head coach. This might be his best job, though. Nobody expected his team to be this good this year. Our lineup's a presentation of Bud Light. The Blue Jays have no senior starters, but yet they've had guys step up. We mentioned Corver and Darren McKinney at the game-winning shot against Wichita State. For the Salukis, Roberts and Dearman powerful inside. And the three perimeter players, an outstanding compliment to them, including Kent Williams, who we talked about earlier. And the head coach of the Salukis, Bruce Weber, in his fourth year here in Little Egypt, 19 years he was an assistant coach for Gene Cady. One year at Western Kentucky, the rest at Purdue. And he also has done an outstanding job coaching the Salukis 21-6 and six this season. And now let's check in Chris Piper with your Chrysler keys to the game for both teams. Brought to you by your Chrysler Jeep dealers. Again, our Chrysler keys to the game. The Blue Jays have had trouble finishing games. They blew a lead against Southern Illinois earlier this year in Omaha. And Creighton needs help inside on Roland Roberts. For Southern Illinois, they've got to defend without fouling and find Corver and make it tough on him shooting the ball. The other key for Southern Illinois, they're going to go right inside to Roberts and to Jermaine Dearman. In fact, Southern Illinois had problems earlier against Creighton in Omaha because they did not go inside enough early, specifically to Roland Roberts. Well, Roland Roberts is a guy, big guy inside, and Southern Illinois knows that they have to get him some touches. Roberts, again, averaging 14 points a game. But this Creighton group, there's Brody Darren. He will battle Roberts early inside. As Southern Illinois has had some great wins this year. They pounded Indiana here at SIU Arena. They were within a whisker of beating the University of Illinois in a neutral tournament earlier this season. And they have been dominant here at home. They have struggled on the road. They've given a couple games away on the road. But now they see their title hopes on the line tonight because if Creighton wins here, the race is over. Are you afraid I'm fighting laryngitis right now, Mitch? You're losing me off and on. I'll <laughs> see if this will work here. I'll tell you what, Creighton is a team right now, a good chance to put things away. But Southern Illinois obviously knows that they've got to get all over Kyle Korver and cover him at all times. J.D. Collins actually faking out Brody Darren on the opening tip of the game. First possession will be Creighton's. Game on in the Valley. A huge one tonight. Well, let's see if Southern Illinois can establish their defense. That's the thing that's just been killing them lately. And giving up uh, more shots from the outside that have been able to fall. And Southern Illinois knows that they have to establish the defensive end again. Quick shot rebounded by Belcher. Marcus Belcher leading the break 
for Southern Illinois. Hairston, an outstanding freshman, been better than expected this year, leaves it long on the shot. Well, and that's what you talked about early, Mitch, is the fact that Southern Illinois wants to get the ball inside. Not a bad shot for Hairston, but get a couple more touches on the ball, see if your big guys can touch it before you shoot that outside shot. Chris, they went double digits in possessions in the game in Omaha before they got Roberts a touch. Well, you can't do that. Roland Roberts, there's nobody in the league that can match up with Roberts when he gets the ball close inside to the basket. But the other thing, there's nobody in the league that knows that you can't leave Kyle Korver open. If you leave Kyle Korver open, he's going to hit shots. On the lob, Roberts gets fouled by McKinney Lowe trying to help as Creighton on the made basket by Korver went to a press. Did you see him just float in the air? They throw that ball up to the corner and let Roland Roberts go after it. It'll be a shooting opportunity. No, it's not going to be. It's going to be a common foul. And SIU will put it in play right of their ring. Belcher keys the inbounds to William, chased by House. Kent Williams is going to the line. You know, you watch Kent Williams play, and every time he catches the ball, he knows exactly what he's going to do with it. The way he reads screens, reads the defense, he always knows where the defense is at. He's always a step ahead offensively. Kent Williams at the line, 72%. And if you're wondering why Southern Illinois has lost some conference games on the road this year, the big cavity, Chris, is free throw shooting. The Salukis are last in the valley at the line. Well, they don't shoot a very good percentage, but the even bigger problem for the last couple of games is they've been outshot attempt-wise 32 to 55. They put the opposing team at the line way too many times. They've got to be able to defend without putting them at the foul line. This crowd into it here at SIU Arena. 3-2, Creighton leading early. Darren and Roberts battling inside. You see him fighting in the paint area. Handoff, Corver drifting on the three and got the roll. Three point basket, 25, Kyle we Corver. saw him do it Sunday against Wichita State. In that game, most of his makes were on threes. Is he unbelievable? He finds ways to get open. These two guys today, Corver and Williams, if you want to learn how to play offense, and, and more importantly, offense is played away from the ball, Mitch. The ability to find scenes in the defense that when you catch the ball, you have a shot. SIU lazy on the interior pass, and it's stolen by Creighton, the number one team in the league, and steals. A little over two minutes elapsed. Creighton leading on two threes by Corbin. Now Creighton did not do a very, very good job of looking inside to Brody Darren. He's open a couple times, giving the ball inside, let him go to work. So they're going out an extremely deep team inside. Michael Lindemann, who was put on the Valley's all-improved team, or most improved team, it's a kid. It used to be a walk-on, Chris, and now he's hitting seven points a game. Well, how about this? Average is just a little over one point last year. Started every game this year. Is just a solidifying force on this Creighton team. Doesn't make a lot of mistakes. When he catches the ball in a scoring position, he'll shoot it, but otherwise he's not going to try and make a play happen offensively. Perfect compliment to a guy like Kyle Korver. Might have a shot clock problem here as Dana Altman and the job he has done. Nobody expected Creighton to be this good this year. They lose Ryan Sears. They lose Ben Walker. They lose a whole slug of seniors. And yet, he's got a chance to win the league tonight. No seniors at all on their roster. Kyle Corver goes down for three games. They lose two of them, one of them badly. But yet, here they are, leading the Missouri Valley. He has gotten the most out of this team. He may, he, You know, the thing I think great coaches do, they get you to play hard, get you to play unselfish, and make your team understand their roles. Another steal for Creighton. Lindemann turns down the early offense. Creighton resets. We're going to match up Tyler McKinney, point guard, got 6'8", Jermaine Dearman guarding him on the outside. Creighton got a good size advantage inside. Kent Williams guarding Kyle Corbin. Anthony Bowden rescued. This is Corver with 10 to shoot. Good defense by Roberts. Five to shoot. McKinney. An air ball, shot clock violation. 
McKinney has been running this team very well. 12 and 1 of the Blue Jays with him as the starting point guard. But he's not shot it that well this season. Well, he doesn't shoot it. He doesn't take many attempts. In fact, he gets four points Sunday against Wichita State. They happen to all be in the last 25 seconds of that game. But you know what? If you're going to score the game winner, that can be your only two points. And Dane Altman would be real happy about it. Creighton and a man. They'll play all kinds of defenses. Dearman, Corver on him. Brooks, good back cut. Darren Brooks, the captain of the Missouri Valley All Bench team, missing on the shot. Corbin, quick pop. Darren underneath with an offensive rebound. Uh oh. Skying is Darren Brooks. Bowden shuts off Williams. We played a little over four minutes. Creighton with the lead, 8-2. Roberts has drawn the foul. Roddy Darren fouling. You know, Roland Roberts, the book on Roland Roberts has let him shoot anything outside of five or six feet. Really, his weapon inside is a soft jump hook. Watch how far off Creighton is playing right now. Really, no help inside because Roberts is so far away from the baskets. Rody Darren, though, lets him off the hook. He's doing what they want to do defensively, make him shoot over the top. Don't let him off the hook by fouling. Roland Roberts at the line has been miserable. 40% at the line, and that's his 150th attempt, Chris. People have almost kind of hack a shack him because he struggled at the line so much. Well, four for his last 15 free throws put him at the line. That's what I'm talking about, Mitch. I watched him shooting around earlier before the game. He's shooting jumpers, everything else from 10, 12 feet. He's not hitting them. He, that's not his shot. He just does not. He's such a strong player, big, huge hands. It's tough for him to have touch. His weapon inside, a little softy jump up. Both of these teams like to use their benches. And we've seen several substitutions early, including Dabbert. That's a goal 10. The ball goes in anyway. And Joe Dabbert has his first bucket. Bench points will be a key stat tonight. It's been big for these teams this year. Creighton leads it 10-3. Creighton has held Southern Illinois without a field goal. Creighton leads it 10 to 3 here. And a reminder, get your tickets now for the 2002 State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Men's Tournament. We call it Arch Madness. March 1st through 4th at Savage Center in St. Louis, where you can call Ticketmaster at 314-241-1888 for tickets. Don't miss a minute of the State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Men's Tournament, March 1st through 4th. We call it Arch Madness. Coming up pretty quick. Looking forward to it. Wide open. All six of those top six seeds will think they have a shot at winning that thing. Nice look underneath. Harrison has it blocked by Kyle Corver. How about Kyle Corver? All of a sudden, he's Mr. Shot Blocker. Has four blocks Sunday against Wichita State. Now a steal by the Salukis. Dearman wide open. Well, they can hit that shot. The ability to take it back out a little ways away from the basket can put it on the floor as well. But Jermaine Dearman getting the start this season after he started last season at the beginning but sat down after a while. Brooks with the board for Southern Illinois off the miss by Terrell Taylor of Creighton. Creighton will play man, zone, match up, press you, three-quarter, full court. You'll see it all. It challenges the guards of the opponent. Not this time for Dearman. Carroll with the board. Ill-advised pass by Ismail Carroll. Brooks, he gets his first bucket of the day. Boy, nice job by Darren Brooks. Finding a seam in the defense. Got the little deflection there, but able to get it back. Darren Brooks really gives him something nice off the bench. The freshman red shirt. Dana Altman trying to settle his team down here. Out of bounds, last touch by Dabbert. He tried to knock it off Sylvester Willis, and instead it ended up bouncing off his leg. Now 
South Southern Illinois starting to get things going here, getting the crowd involved, the defensive end, Dane Altman just saying, hey, settle down, but he didn't give it too hard of a look, though, did he mention it? Ah, okay, I'm going to go sit down now. 10-7, four consecutive points for Southern Illinois. As you look at the Creighton bench, assistant coach Darren DeVries, former great player at Northern Iowa, for Eldon Miller. Southern Illinois appears to be settling down a bit. They're a little bit frantic to start the game. Harrison using the ball screen. Dearman offensive foul. Harrison actually puts Jermaine Dearman in a bad position there. Dearman's actually trying to fight for position inside the post. And Harrison gives him the ball like he's going to do something with it offensively. Watch the penetration here to the lane. Actually, Jermaine Dearman, he's just trying to get position. When he gets the ball in his hand, now he's in a bad position to get the foul called against him. Tyler McKinney holding the spot inside in the lane. Did you see Kent Williams spotted up in the corner going, Beg it, here. beg it. Give me the ball. Rocket, give me the rock. When you're Kyle Korver and you're Kenton Williams, you shouldn't have to beg for the ball when you're open. Darren, nice hook, NBA-style hook over the top of Roland Roberts. I really think Creighton's got to utilize Brody Darren more. He is a guy with a big body inside, great touch for a big man. And I think this Southern Illinois inside defense might be a little susceptible. Brooks to the basket. And it's going to be a foul on the rebound. It'll be on Roland Roberts. Fans didn't like it. Roberts is at a Woodbridge, Virginia. I know another small college player, Justin Helmer, who played high school ball with him. He said he was a man when he was in high school. This guy really is a force inside for Bruce Weber. Just big and strong. I mean, look at the shoulders on this guy. He pushes people around, finds a position. Plays an athletic game. That's why I said Creighton might have a little advantage inside because sometimes when you go against a guy that uses athleticism rather than position, you get the bucket. Nice weak side look for the Blue Jays to get Darren a basket. Creighton in the press. Third steal of the game. Easy bucket, Terrell Taylor with the flush. How about the big fella? Brody Darren shooting the gap there. He's the interceptor on the trap. Reads the pass in Southern Illinois. A little lackadaisical with the ball. This is the way the game started in Omaha, but Southern Illinois was able to rally in that one. Roberts, Iso. And that's twice now. Brody Darren's got the position. He's between him, between Roland Roberts and the basket. But yet again, he lets him off the hook with the foul. And two fouls now. Going to have to be uh, get Mike Grimes in off the bench for Creighton. Give him some big minutes. Look, Brody Darren's got Roland Roberts where he wants, six feet away from the basket, but yet he still goes after the block shot. Let Roland Roberts go over the top of you, Mitch, and block him out for the uh, defensive board. Roberts can be huge. 28 points, 18 rebounds in a game earlier this season. Second in the Valley in field goal percentage. You know, he wasn't a terrible foul shooter at Virginia Tech. He was 60% for the Hokies. Are you saying 40% is terrible? Kind of. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> I don't think it's what Bruce Weber has no, in mind. It's not what they have in mind. Porn off the bench. Fills the three. Brad Porn, a sophomore, rings home his 20th three of the year. Well, that's good news for the Salukis. Brad Porn, foul trouble the last couple of games has not been in very many minutes at all. And he can shoot the ball from the outside. That'll open up the inside game a little bit. The Salukis in front of the near sellout crowd trying to energize defensively. Taylor on a back cut held by Brooks. Foul on the Salukis number one, Darren Brooks. Brooks' first personal foul. That's the third team foul on... Timeout on the floor, 11-38. Left to go in the first half. Great. Leads by a half dozen. Great leading Southern Illinois, 16-10, 11-38 left to go in the first half. Tonight, our Prairie Farms Missouri Valley Conference Scholar Athlete is Southern Illinois' Kent Williams, the Valley's freshman of the year two years ago. Honorable mention conference scholar athlete last year at 3-2 in marketing. Also one of the Valley's leading scorers. In fact, he's third this year in scoring at 16 points a game. 
Academics are important to the Valley. Let's salute Kent Williams, tonight's Prairie Farms Missouri Valley Conference scholar athlete. Kent setting down for the time being. Won't be long. He'll be back in pretty quick. Mike Grimes now in the game for Brody Darren for Creighton. Bruce Weber thought it was off Corver, but the Blue Jays will keep the basketball. Bruce Weber's seen a lot of ball. You spent 18 years in the Big Ten. You've been through a little bit of everything. Grimes off the bench. He's been good this year, too. He's also on the all-bench team from the Valley. Nine to shoot. Nice job by Roberts. Hairston. Loops a pass to Corn. Nice job, Creighton, getting back defensively. Brooks, they're going to count it? Yes, they will. Roberts, his first field goal. A little continuation action and a foul on Creighton. Well, again, Creighton's forgetting about Roland Roberts. Not the fact that he's inside, but the fact that make him shoot over the top. Mike Grimes, he's there with the help. Kyle Corver saying that should be down on the floor, and that's questionable. Watch the foul coming up the top. Mike Grimes on the ball fake, and he still hasn't gone up. Southern Illinois gets one there to the free throw line. But that's not such a bad thing either. Actually, it's better for Creighton that he goes to the free throw line. Well, he's 40% for the year. He's 20% tonight at 1 of 5. You know, if they call that on the floor, Southern Illinois gets the ball out of bounds. Bruce Weber might have been saying, hey, that was on the floor. 16-12, hand check on SIU. I don't think there's any question going into the game that you know there or knew there'd be a lot of fouls called. A couple reasons. Southern Illinois likes to get in games with a lot of foul trouble. They don't like it, but that's their, their MO. And secondly, when you get number one and number two in the valley going at it, it's going to be a heated contest. The shot is up and in by Taylor. Three NCAA appearances as SIU gets out on the break. As now there's a foul underneath on Creighton. But I want to show you something here, Chris. It's no secret why Creighton has been so successful. Look at this. On the road the last four years. Well, good teams win on the road. It talks about toughness, the ability to take what you do on the home floor and then go out and translate that on the road. You know, so many teams pull all their energy off the home court. To be able to be able to win and be a champion in your, in your league, you're going to be able to make it happen. And Creighton is 6-1 and one in the Valley on the road this year. Creighton is one of 14 teams nationally with five or more conference road wins. They're six and one in the Valley this year, but the converse of that is the fact that SIU is undefeated at home this season. Tyrese Bowie missing a free throw after being fouled by Corbin. And not only undefeated, but they haven't had anybody within eight points of them either. I mean, they've just taken care of business. Bowie splits a pair at the line. 18-13, the Blue Jays by five at 10-14, left in the first half. Again, if Creighton wins the game, they will be the Valley regular season champions. Glindeman. Stopped initially by Roberts. It'll be a foul on Korn, and Lindemann's going to get two free throws. Well, Michael Lindemann adding a little bit more to this Creighton team, putting the ball down. Lindemann just getting a little bit of token pressure there by Roland Roberts, and then he realizes Roland Roberts backing away from him. He says, hey, wait a minute, I can take it to the basket. Roberts thinking that Brad Korn was going to get in there and get involved, but got to stop the ball and stay with him until somebody else comes over. Roland Roberts is usually issuing the pain inside, but he took a shot to the face. And uh, a little blood issue here going on. I think they're going to make Roberts come out of the game. So Roberts is going to set out as the cut doctor works on him. <laughs> well, when you're dishing it out, every once in a while they come back your way. A deflection. <laughs> Ricochet. You just don't want him to get the uh, word who's the guy that did it. <laughs> That's right. He's looking out there what right me? now. He's trying to find somebody. Lindemann's been good at the line for the year, 81%, even though he had a late miss against Wichita State. He splits a pair there. Creighton leads 19-13, under 10 left in the first half. Southern Illinois, again, you 
using their bench tonight. And Bruce Weber was very, very succinct with me early in the week, Chris, because he said, in our big wins, our bench has been big. Traveling on McKinney. Well, both these teams get a lot of production off the bench. You know, good teams got to be able to go to the bench and no guys are going to give them minutes. See the rebound coming up and Tyler McKinney, a little shove from one of his own guys, gets the travel. Board's important here for Creighton. They're giving up size advantage inside to Southern Illinois. And when you get a team like Southern Illinois to miss shots, you got to be able to get the board. Well, speaking of cut doctors, Kent Williams now has a shot above his eyebrow. There's a look at Roland Roberts. He has to sit down because he got cut. And now Kent Williams. I was just kidding about the cut doctor thing. Ferdy Pacheco is going to be over there <laughs> working on these guys. Boy, he's, oh, yeah, he's got the bleeder there. See the action coming inside. Kent Williams. It's going to be a loose ball. And, you know, a lot of arms flailing right now. Kent Williams got one there from Mike Grimes. Tyler McKinney's wondering about the call for the travel because he got shoved, but it actually was his own man. Williams actually has blood on his jersey. He's going to have to switch his jersey. Yeah, they knew it was going to be a battle. Southern Illinois just didn't know it was going to be them, the ones getting the blood on them. Now they're going to have to come out and clean it up. Ed Thompson is the head athletic trainer here. Now there's the team doctor. He's been busy too, but uh, SIU with a good training staff. Is those guys a little busier than they want to be at this point. But Ed Thompson, trainer for SIU. Well, Southern Illinois right now, four for ten from the floor. You know, the percentage is not great, but the real problem is the fact that Creighton has 14 shots compared to Southern Illinois' 10. Creighton winning the battle on the boards. Look at the percentages there. Creighton shooting a great percentage plus the fact they've had more shots, and that's going to help you out. You know, you look at the last couple of losses for Southern Illinois on the road. You look down the numbers, all the numbers the same. Field goal percentages, field goals made, everything. Boom, boom, boom. And then you get to one little number, free throws. Huge disparity there for Southern Illinois. Not only the fact that the other team has shot more, but the fact that the other team has made more as far as percentage. Southern Illinois has, get, has cost themselves some games this year at the free throw line. We earlier saw Dr. Don Knapp, the team physician for SIU, again, Kent Williams in the locker room, having to switch his jersey. But Roberts also setting down with a bleeder to the face. So now you got your top two scorers out of the lineup. Somebody has to step up for the Salukis. Brooks forcing one. And Terrell Taylor comes out of the scrum with it. Oh, he was wanting to pull there. He was hoping the crowd would run on by. House, Taylor, and Korn with a rebound. Brad Korn having a nice game inside for Southern Illinois. He's just happy to be out there right now without getting fouls called on. Dearman, great seal. Chance for a three-point play. Jermaine Dearman can be so tough inside, and he draws the foul and the free throw. Well, what an advantage Southern Illinois has right now inside with Jermaine Dearman. He's got good size, and watch where the pass comes into him in a position away from the defense. Mike Grimes goes for the steal, and no help coming until late. You're going to front Jermaine Dearman down there. You've got to get to the spot. Look at that pass. is delivered right on the outside so he can spin away from the defense and go immediately to the basket. Kent Williams with the New Jersey back out on the floor. The foul was on Tyler McKinney, the Creighton point guard. He's now got two. And also back in the lineup for SIU is Roland Roberts. Gretchen Roberts isn't out there yet. But a three-point play for Jermaine Dearman. He's got five, and SIU back within three. House inside, grabbing his own rebound, hacked from behind by Marcus Belcher. Now Larry House is a guy that really doesn't know a whole lot about Southern Illinois this year. He only played four minutes in Omaha, got an early leg injury in that game, didn't come back. So this is his first real good look. He's a good athlete on the floor for Creighton, somebody that they need to have active in the game, more so on the defensive end. He matches up well with Southern Illinois speed. 
House is from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Of course, the community that produced Rodney Buford of Creighton, fame, now in the NBA with the Memphis Grizzlies. House played his junior college ball at Colby Community College in Kansas in the tough Jayhawk League. I've always wondered how you get from Milwaukee to Colby. I mean, I hardly go to easy. Colby sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't easy. But you know that Jayhawk Conference, junior college basketball, and you and I have followed it for a long time. That's like a mini D1. That's right. You, you can see some good it. basketball there. Four-point lead for Creighton. 8.25 left in the half. Dearman. Oh. Up and under. Dabbert shows up. The zone here by Creighton. Hairston stripped by Caro. Dearman gets it back. Had to fling it because it was one second. It's a shot clock violation. The ball goes to Creighton. Missing Kent Williams on the floor right now for Southern Illinois. An offensive threat to make things happen. You can only go to Jermaine Dearman so many times. Last possession when he catches it, he turns. He's got three blue jerseys on. House one-on-one -on -one creates and hits. And the Blue Jays back up to a six-point lead. A little trap here by the Blue Jays. Now I want to ask you, when you're a guard for a Creighton opponent, it's like being in a flight simulator. What do you do to read the defense and get your team in a proper set? Well, you got to be prepared for it. Obviously, you talk about it in practice. You know what they're going to do. Good block again inside, but more important, when you bring the ball out of bounds, you got to take a quick look and see what's going on on the floor and size it up. 7.34 left in the first half. The Blue Jays lead the hometown Salukis by six. It's time now to play the rest of the team. Mitchell to Slovakia, along with Chris Piper in Carbondale, Illinois, Creighton leading SIU. 22 16. Let's take a look at the Valley standings brought to you by Edward Jones. More than 130 years of experience helping individuals build financial security. How about all the work that's left? You know, the last three games in the Missouri Valley Conference decided by two points or less. That tells you a little work going on right now. Everybody knows each other. It's down to the time where each game is so critical as far as your seating going into the Valley. And Nobody wants to be below six. Last night, a couple of surprises. Evansville wins at Northern Iowa for just the third league win of the year. And then in a controversial game, Drake wins at Indiana State. As a hot dog was thrown on the floor by a fan in Terre Haute, causing a technical to be called. But the league investigating the matter today and talking with Boomer Bain, the director of officials in the league, has said really it was an inappropriate decision with the technical being called without a warning, an administrative warning given in Terre Haute. Checking into the ball game for the Salukis. Too Number much to do every day, then skip that trip to the bank because at AllegiantBank.com, you can handle almost all your banking online. At Allegiant Bank, your bank's open 24 hours a day, every day. Proud to be the official bank of the Valley. Allegiant Bank pledged to a better way of banking, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Well, you always want to make sure you give that crowd one warning and get rid of the guy that's affecting the game because it's always just one one guy that ruins it for everybody. A three now, and SIU has gone frigid here. They've not had bad looks, Pipe, but they just can't knock down shots from the perimeter. Well, they got Roland Roberts and Kent Williams still sitting on the bench, the two guys that are going to make things happen. Kent Williams outside can hit that shot, and then Roland Roberts is there if you miss it. House with a jump stop, trying to get something to Corver. Dearman on him. Good size on Corver, keeps that three-point shot away. Caro somehow weaves through the arms to get a bucket. And you know, that's great in basketball right there. Caro averaging two points a game, gets a bucket there in the first half in traffic. They just keep finding guys to step up. A little half-court pressure, falling back to the zone, it looks like, for Creighton. You just never know. I mean, they'll throw matchups at you. Oh! Hard. Crash, Dabber to the floor. They will call it non-player control and a foul on Jermaine Dearman in second. Jermaine Dearman a little pain there, but who's there for the charge? Kyle Corver. Was that Kyle? Or was it Dabber? Dabber. It was Dabber. I thought it was Corver. He ran in there, I think, to take credit real fast. Now, Dearman's setting down, so... The lineup... Now for SIU with Belcher, Korn, Brooks, Willis, and Hairston. So three non-starters out there now for SIU. I'm 
looking on the bench for SIU. I don't see Kent Williams. Is he? I think he's back out. He might be stitching up that cut above the eye. Williams is two points in the game and no field goal. They're both on free throws. Now, Kent Williams, a guy you know that's going to give you some points. And without his presence right now on the floor, Southern Illinois searching a little bit on both ends. Taylor hits a shot with a Saluki in his face. It's the biggest lead of the first half for Creighton. 5.15 left in the half. Well, you got to remember, this is a young Southern Illinois team. So they got some lot of guys first year on the floor for them right now. And, and they've coming off of two losses back to back. A little bit of uh, searching going on in the faces right now. Bruce Weber's team, a little loss of confidence. Bruce Weber was saying earlier this week, he says, we've got to get our blue collar attitude back. He said, when we were playing great in January and early February, we were doing it on both ends of the floor. But he says, we've got to get that attitude back. Well, tough physical basketball. When you make cuts against them, they're bodying up against you, not allowing you to go where you wanted to go offensively. Here this evening, most of the time, Creighton's making cuts all the way to the basket without anybody for Southern Illinois. Give them a little stop. Eight to shoot. And a three-pointer is up and in by Darren Brooks. Sixth in the league in three-point percentage. SIU needed it. And a steal. Hairston and gives it right back to Craig. Well, turnovers between the free-throw lines will hurt you both ways. Hairston trying to do too much with the ball in traffic. Taylor. Dabber. Corver tips it in. That's what I love about Kyle Corver. He doesn't have to be shooting the ball every time. He just finds ways to get involved with this Creighton offense. How many leagues will you find a player who is fourth in scoring, fifth in assists? Well, now all of a sudden he's the block man as well. Watch where he's watching Joe Dabbert. He's kind of standing in there, posting up right now, doesn't get the ball. Instead, just stays underneath nobody for Southern Illinois boxing out. I think that's the most important thing of that replay, actually, was watching Southern Illinois on the defensive end, just standing still, not boxing out. Bruce Weber, he's all about getting bodies on you. We've been told that both Roberts and Williams, arguably the two best players on SIU's team in the locker room, getting stitches above the eye. Both will return. So this is like a prize fight. 4.17 left in the first half. Creighton leads by nine. A lot of game to play right now. So Creighton's actually playing pretty good basketball, and Southern Illinois is on the extreme opposite end of that. Let's not forget Creighton had a 14-point lead in the first half in Omaha, and it ended up losing that game. Over and back now called on the Salukis. But they really miss the presence of Kent Williams on the floor. He just, you know, he's a guy that always is open, always provides an offensive outlet. Roland Roberts back in the game. So he's been stitched up and back. But these Saluki guards are really struggling against the switching defenses of Creighton. Well, you know, what, what you find yourself doing is going away from the basket in that kind of situation. Instead, you've got to be take control of the situation and attack, go towards the glass. Something good is going to come out of it. We have an official Roberts stop. touched it. But we'll have the under four timeout. 348 left first half. Creighton by nine. Back in Carbondale, Creighton, Creighton leading Southern Illinois, 28 to 19 late in the first half. Time now to our great equalizer brought to you by Equal Sweetener and Pipe coming into the game. These two teams were one and two in the league and shooting the basketball. Well, Creighton's held up to that. Southern Illinois on the other side has not. Southern Illinois struggling from the floor, shooting a horrible percentage, six for 19. Jermaine Dearman, two for six out of that, and Darren Brooks, two for seven. Southern Illinois just not able to get into the flow offensively. Roland Roberts, number one in the league, and block shots, gets one there. Swats it away, an inbounds attempt by Creighton. Well, Creighton extremely active in this zone, getting out on the wings. See if Southern Illinois can decide to get the ball in a little bit more, except they want to throw it to a white jersey, not a blue. And you're right, with Williams out, the zone is really doing what Creighton wants it to do. But Williams is the zone buster on this team. Not only keeping Southern Illinois from scoring, but using up clock as well. 
Heineman will go to the line now for Craig. They will call it one and one and not on the shot here. Oh, they are going to give him two shots. So Lindemann will get two tosses. That was on Tyrese Boozy, or Tyrese Bowie, I'm sorry, of SIU. Four for Lindemann, one of many Iowans on this team. Dane Altman has done an outstanding job with his staff of getting good players out of Iowa. Not, not, not only do they get good players, Mitch, but they get the most out of every player. I mean, they just squeeze every little bit out of them. Michael Lindemann's a great example of that. But how about the state of Iowa and the players they produce? Collison and, and uh, Heinrich at Kansas. Two starters from Wyoming are from Iowa. Of course, the Hawkeyes, Cyclones, Drake, and you and I get their share. Creighton had Ryan Sears out of Ankeny. That can open the door for the Blue Jays. Nice feed inside. Willis can't get it to fall. Can't get it to fall, and nobody for Southern Illinois on the offensive boards. Everybody's acting like they think every shot's going to go down. In fact, Willis, after he shot it, he turned to run down to the floor. A steal by Tyrese Bowie. Actually, Tyrese Bowie in the right place at the right time. <laughs> that's all. That's the kind of steal you like, isn't it? Oh, hey, there's the ball. Numbers for Creighton. Little touch pass, and oh. Debert with the oh. stop. And they're going to call a foul on SIU. But you don't run a three-on-one break any better than Creighton just did. How about the unselfishness of this Creighton team? I'll tell you what, when you've got Kyle Korver out running with Caro, obviously Korver's the guy that's going to finish it, but instead he gives it right back, keeps the defense off balance, and the big man, Joe Dabbert, he could have just stood at half court and watched that play develop. The great hustle on his part, getting down, getting involved. SIU wanted a charging call, but instead it's a personal foul on Belcher. But Dabbert misses the free throw, but another steal by the Blue Jays. It's like guard plays killing Southern Illinois. Harrison with a strong board for the Salukis. Look, they got to look. Right now, they had Roland Roberts inside, but now too late. Got the defense set. Corn gets his feet set. Drains it. Brad Corn's keeping SIU in the game. And now Roberts and Dabbert are going to be called to the middle of the ring. <laughs> middle of the rink? Is that what you said? The ring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put some ropes up. Actually, if I'm playing against Roland Roberts, I want no ropes. I want to be able to run whenever I have to and run fast. Six steals by Creighton. They lead the league in steals. But the turnover bug is hitting SIU here. Nine turnovers against the Salukis. Kent Williams back in the game for Southern Illinois. Now they got a little crowd going. And Williams looks mad. You see the look on his face? He's a competitor. A little too mad. Got right up on DeAnthony Bowden. Williams fouling. Creighton is in the double bonus. Kent Williams gives this team an identity. How about when he steps back on the floor for Southern Illinois? All of a sudden, you get a little bit of aggression. Does he have a cut on the back of his head, too? He's got the butterfly. Yeah, it sure does. They had to sew him up in the back of his head. Two shots for Bowden. Take a look here now at Kent Williams. You tell me if this game's tough. He's got There's one over the elbow and then got a little spot on the back. Had to shave it. Either that or they drew on his head while they were stitching <laughs> him in there. It's like saving Private Williams. <laughs> it's the way it should be in the Valley for the lead in the conference, isn't it? Although we've still got a few games left to go. That's the way St. Louis is going to be. I think every stinking game in that tournament is going to be like this. Well, everybody knows they're going to have a chance to win. Wide open. 130 left in the half. 32-22. Creighton has had several 10-point leads. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't want to be the one who has to play Bradley in that tournament either. No. Or Indiana State. Roberts. Strong, not there. Rebound pulled down by House. Bowden sped up. And a tip in. Offensive basket interference. No basket. No basket. Some basketball. How about the speed of DeAnthony Bowden playing the point now for Creighton really gives them 
more speed than they have with Tyler McKinney. Just sees the team and the defense goes right through. Watch Grimes coming after the play. Wow. I don't know. Doesn't look like a good tip. Brooks, set shot for three. Not there. Darren Brooks has five points, but has missed a couple three. Yeah, but he's got shots. And it's I might be able to score at that pace, Mitch. Inside of a minute. I doubt it, though. <laughs> you could. I've seen both of us shoot. You got a national title ring, though. 22 seconds is the differential between the shot clock and game clock. Got to move the ball. Roberts closes down on Corver Knights. Foul away from the ball. It's on Hairston. Much smaller than Mike Grimes. Well, mismatch inside. Somebody's got to help out there. Grimes inside. Roland Roberts outside Garvin Corver. Got to identify that. Hairston and Roberts got to identify that mismatch. Talk to each other and switch back. Grimes shoves it. Misses it. Watch the play inside. When you're a little guy inside and you got to be yelling for Roberts, hey, come get a switch. But, you know, the thing that Creighton did was they kept the ball outside and Roberts couldn't leave Corver, so they couldn't get the switch done. Along with 21, Joe Davis. Grimes will get another one. Bruce Weber not happy. The coat's off. The tie will be next. Fiery Scani out of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. Where he went to school, free throw down for Grimes, his first point of the night. 11 point lead, Creighton, half minute left. Good fast team on the floor right now for Creighton. This trap really plays into their hands. This is as fast a team as Creighton's got. Harrison one on one against Taylor. 14 seconds left in the half. Side to side for Southern Illinois. Got to go to the basket. Williams, jump stop. Robbed by the rim. Creighton will travel. J.D. Collins is going to call this what? Southern Illinois basketball. They said they stepped out of bounds. Well, you got to like the hustle for Creighton, though. Two guys really going after the board. Unfortunately, one of them's got to say, hey, my ball there. Good battle. Creighton tried to call for the timeout. Couldn't get it. Four seconds left. Now Creighton calls their first half 30. They got one to burn here in the half with 4.1 seconds left. And Dane Altman will use it to set his defense. Too much to do every day? Then skip that trip to the bank because at AllegiantBank.com you can handle, handle almost all of your banking online. At AllegiantBank.com, your bank's open 24 hours a day every day. Proud to be the official bank of the Valley, Allegiant Bank. Pledge to a better way of banking. Equal housing lender, Ladies member FDIC. We ask you to please remain in your seat for a special presentation at halftime. We ask you to please remain well, in your seat for a special presentation. 22 points for Southern Illinois here in the first half. They have hit seven of 25 shots. Give Dana Altman and his defense a lot of credit for that. They lead the league. There's a little it's remnant short. of some oh. defense. <laughs> Who do you think is going to get this shot? Let's head it back to Williams. If he can get it, Brooks is going to take it. Horn can't get the reverse back in there. SIU will head to their locker room for triage. It's halftime here in Carbondale. Creighton, if they can win, they'll win the title. And right now they lead by 11. 